myself Subit Bengeri. I am heading uh, Philips Additive in India. So Philips Additive uh, represent uh, three major brands. One is EOS from Germany, uh, Mark Force from USA and Philips Hybrid from US. Philips ventured into 3D printing technology to cater the uh, business opportunities of aerospace, space, automotive and tool room. With this Mark IV technology, we aim to transform your business. Kindly stay tuned to dive deeper into it. Hello everyone. So, welcome. So, myself, Suman Gowda. So, I'm the senior application engineer in Philips Machine Tools. So, today I'm going to talk about additive product from Mark Forge, which are basically the composite printers, where we are going to talk about the Mark II, which is our desktop version printer, and X7, which is our industrial series printer. So, when we are talking about the Mark II, so we are concentrating on printing of such a parts where you can replace your existing aluminum or stainless steel parts with the 3D printed component. Even though the machine looks simple, so the parts that can be obtained out of it are really strong enough for us to use it as our end use parts. In case of Mark II, we are talking about a build volume of 320mm in x-axis and 130mm in y-axis and about 150mm in z-axis. And in terms of X7, we are talking about 330 into 270 into 200. So in both the cases, the build volume differs, but the kind of models or the strength that can be obtained out of these printers remains the same because of the main composite plastic, which is onyx. And when we are also considering the main strength of this Mark Forge composites, which are the continuous fiber filaments. So in continuous fiber filaments, we have got four different versions of fibers, which are basically carbon fiber, Kevlar, high strength, high temperature, fiberglass, and the fiberglass, which can also be compared with like a material which is almost 10 times stronger than the regular plastic. But the main strength lies in our carbon fiber material, where we can print a parts which are almost 25 times stronger than a regular plastics. And the compositions of this particular printer ideally deals with our background work, which is our software, which we call it as the IGER. So IGER software deals around with slicing and processing of our file so that we can get the part ready to print within few fraction of minutes. In an era where we have to spend around like half a day for manufacturing of any parts using a traditional process, we will be able to start production within few minutes. And as I earlier mentioned, the parts that we're going to get out of this are really strong enough so that it can be used as an end used component. So let's go in detail and discuss about few of the highlights of each printers individually. So let's go in depth on the Mark Forge Mark II printer, which is the desktop version printer from the Mark Forge series. So in the Mark II version, so we are dealing with the, the printer and the dry box which comes along with this. So the dry box is usually used to store the material where we will be storing materials like onyx and nylon so that it does not get absorbed with any kind of moisture. So this dry box makes sure that this material can be stored for as long as the material is completed so that the material will not absorb any kind of moisture and it can be completely closed in with a latch system and the material will be loaded to the printer using this tube. Once the material reaches this particular servo motor gears, so the gear actually latches on to the material and then starts pulling it. So all this mechanism is completely controlled from our cloud-based software called as IGER. So Whenever we need to load any functionality, not just while loading of the material, even when we are talking about during the printing function, the material, how much the material has to be pushed in is completely controlled with the gears that are provided inside this motor. And the complete functionality of the entire printing is based on the material that is being supplied from this point. So now we have understood about the plastic loading. So let's also go in depth about the fiber loading deposition. So fiber materials are stored in open environment. Since these materials are not hydroscopic in nature, we don't have to worry about the moisture that is getting absorbed in the material. And similar to the regular plastics, so even the fiber material will be loaded through a small tube. And but the entire functionality will be controlled from this motor, which actually drives the material of the fiber material as per the requirement. So the movement of this is also controlled from the IGER software where the material is deposited based on our requirement. So now since the, our composite plastic and our fiber materials are ready to go, so both these materials will be pushed in towards the nozzle. So the nozzle functionality is to make sure that the material gets heated to a certain temperature and then whatever is getting heated is deposited onto the base plate. So the temperature of this 
is completely controlled even once again from our software. So it makes sure that the plastic material is heated to a temperature of around like more than 270 degrees and the fiber material is just heated so that it can be bonded with the plastic. The two nozzles which can be seen indicates one for the composite plastic and one for the regular fiber material. So based on our requirement and based on the configurations that are configured with the IGAR software, so the material starts to deposit from each individual nozzles. So once the material reaches its per certain temperature, the material starts to ooze out and then the material will be deposited layer by layer as per the requirement. So now let's go in depth about the settings that are available in the Mark II. So we can just pull up the glass that is provided. So now if you can look at the screen, so we are talking about the material that has currently been loaded which is the onyx plastic and also the carbon fiber material. So we previously saw about how the materials are being loaded from the tube tool till the gear system and then it is driven through the nozzle. So if you go in depth about the settings, so we can see the material that are currently being loaded which is the onyx plastic and the carbon fiber material. We can also see the percentage of material remaining in it. If you go in depth about the settings that are provided, so we have got six different settings. So the first setting talks about the bed leveling option where we concentrate about the leveling of the bed which, which involves the calibration of the build plate and then we have got the material settings which talks about the loading and unloading of the material where the required material can be loaded as per our requirement and then in the storage we are talking about the pre some of the presetted uh, documents that are available and some of the data which we are supposed to print using any kind of like an hard drive devices and we have the utilities command where we have some amount of like test prints that can be printed out we also have got the print queue settings where we can print the parts which are preloaded and then we have the settings command which generally speaks about the printing param printer parameters and several uh, settings of the printer. So now we have recently printed one of the aircraft bracket. So as you can see this particular part took around like uh, somewhere close to around like six hours of time for printing. So if we go in depth about this particular part, so the bracket point which we just printed out can also be used as an end use component because of its strength that is involved in it. So we have printed this part using onyx and carbon fiber combination which gives us the ultimate strength of what a composite material can deliver. So now I just to demonstrate on the internal view, so we also have got few amount of supports that were printed along with the part. So which later on can be manually removed with just small pullover. So I will just be using a small chisel to take out the material from the build plate. So here if you can observe the, the part can easily be separated and the build plate can be reused for as long as several years. So we don't have to worry about the replacement of this build plate until and unless the plate has been damaged. The support material are having a very delicate contact with the main model material. So just with some small force of pull, so I can easily separate the support material from the model. And if you can also observe the surface finish in the area where the support material was there, so it's still as clear as the regular part. So the surface finish is one of the major highlights of printing a parts with the Mark Forge composites. So even with the internal supports which are in the holes, so with just a small pull, it comes out like a kind of chain and the entire supports will be removed. So this is one of the major highlights. So as mentioned, the surface finish is one of the major highlights of uh, Mark Forge printed parts. So as we can closely observe, the surface finish of this part really stands out when we are comparing it with any of the regular parts. So it, even the bottom surface gives us a very clear picture where the flatness can be met at very close to around 10 to 20 microns. And when we are talking about the tight tolerances for the holes, we can definitely use the post machining option which can give us an accuracy of even like 10 to 20 microns if required. In the X7 series printer, we are capable to print four different fiber materials along with four different composite plastics. So the build volume of this particular printer is close to around 330 mm into 270 mm into 200 mm in height. So this particular printer has got the capability to print parts which are as strong as an aluminium or stainless steel. So when we are comparing with regular plastics, so the parts that can be printed out of this are generally very unique and also has got a very good stability in terms of tensile and in compression load. So the main components of these printers involve the combination of printing both onyx plastic and the fiber materials as a reinforcement where we can achieve parts which are as strong. So the complete deposition of the material happens as guided from our IGAR software. So the material can be deposited each layer by layer as per our requirement whether it is a complete solid part or whether it is with the infill geometry where we can achieve the strength as per our requirement and also 
the main highlighted points would be that the surface finish that we will be achieving would also be at a very good grade. Onyx is our base plastic material which is being used in our both desktop and industrial series uh, Mark IV printers. So it's a basically a nylon grade material which is a combination of some 15% of carbon fiber material and with a diameter of 1.75 mm. So this particular material has got some of the unique properties like it is chemically resistant to almost 80 different chemicals and it is also having a temperature withstanding capacity of close to 145 degrees which makes this part a unique for several of our applications. Continuous fiber filament are one of the major advantage of Mark Forge composite 3D printers. So the main advantage lies in the continuity of the fibers. So here the fibers are not in a chopped form, here we have it in a continuous form which enables us the strength of the part is 10 to 25 times stronger than the regular plastics which is almost close to of an aluminium or a stainless steel material. So as you can see the part in my hand looks like a regular plastic component but the reality is this particular component has been reinforced with the fiber material. So when we stop the print in between and have a look at the internal structure as you can see the boundary of the part contains fiberglass material which can be which is highlighted in the white color and then the black color highlights of our regular plastic onyx material. The strength of this component is pretty strong so that even with applying a huge amount of strength we will not be able to bend the component. So let's take one of the mating part for example. We can also see the kind of detailings that we get on top of this part and also if you look at the gearing structure, the mating point, so it completely matches and then the bonding really looks strong. So this now can be used as an end component without any worries. So this particular component which earlier used to be of like a stainless steel part can now be re replaced with onyx plus carbon fiber combination. Let's take a closer view of our cloud based Iger software which we generally use for generating of our models for before printing the process. So here we can see a small model of a riser which we would like to execute during for our printing process. So this particular model we would like to print in onyx. We can also choose from different varieties of material as per our requirement. We also have a fire retard material which can be used for applications where the fire is involved and we also have an ESD grade material which can be used for applications where it's used for electronic enclosures. We recently have launched with our FR A grade material which is a kind of approved material for aerospace applications and we also can choose from four varieties of fiber material if in case it is required. It's fiberglass, carbon fiber, Kevlar or high strength high temperature fiberglass. We, in the settings option, we can choose from different varieties of layer heights based on our requirements starting from 50 microns to 250 microns where we can select each layer height as per our requirement. At the same stage, we can also go to the infill geometry where we can work on the infill settings whether it's a kind of triangular fill, hexagonal or a complete solid fill as per our requirement. So here we have chosen rectangular fill with 10% and the calculation shows us that this is going to be a find of our sprint and this will be the calculations based on that. So before evaluating the part, we will be getting the entire structure. If we go to the internal view of this particular geometry, so we can visualize the different parameters that are involved in it. So we can go to the 2D structure and see a layer by layer view of how the part will be printed. At the same way now, if you also are selecting a fiber deposition, so the fiber lines would also be appearing inside. Now let's take a deeper dive when we are considering carbon fiber reinforcement. So as you can see in our settings parameters, I have selected carbon fiber as one of one of my main fiber material which I would like to print with. All the remaining settings I have kept it constant similar to my previous option. So in, including the infill. So if I go to the internal view of uh, the reinforced fiber material, so here if you can observe the part which is highlighted in blue is actually indicating the fiber deposition. But in reality we are not doing this 100% fiber, we are just doing it only in the boundary. So it would be something like once the first base is printed with regular plastic, we will be printing few lines of continuous fiber and then as you can see, so only the boundary of the part would be printed with the fiber material and the remaining infill we are once again printing with the regular onyx because the boundary or the border lines which is printed in a continuous fiber would be more than sufficient to provide the required strength for our parts.
So now as we have gone through the Mark 4, Mark 2 printer and the X7 printer, so I believe we were able to give you some information about the both the printers and the kind of parts that can be printed out of it and the strength of those particular components. Thank you for watching this video and we request you to kindly get in touch with us to explore more on this technology.